Hi, friends. Early in the morning at two o'clock p.m., my family woke me up with the words "Get up, lazy!" A huge package is waiting for you in the yard. Partially dressed, I ran into the yard. They didn't lie about the huge package. Grabbing a clerical knife, I began to cut this box like children do with New Year's gifts. While I opened the box, perhaps I should tell you what it is. Sometimes, either for nostalgic reasons or purely for business, I buy all sorts of things from various internet flea markets. But because I live in another country, I buy indirectly mainly through this person, Yura. A big hello to you. Yura finds everything I need, checks it on the spot, and then sends everything to me by mail. And in front of you is just one of these parcels. The first thing is the Soviet Digital Portable Multimeter Electronics MMT01. I have two electronics. Why did I need a third? The fact is that I found a very good option inexpensively, and most importantly, it is practically new, fully equipped with factory props and instructions. I needed all this so that I could make a video for you where we will compare this electronics with American competitor Fluke 8020. I think everyone will be interested. This is one of the late releases, year 1992. In fact, it was made after the collapse of USSR. There isn't even a price tag, but in the late 80s, electronics cost about 125 Soviet rubles, which for many was almost a monthly salary. This is a 3.5-digit portable digital multimeter, which in its functionality is close to the multimeters of DT830 series, except that the electronics can measure resistance up to 20 megohm versus 2 megohm in the case of the 830 multimeter. Another difference is that electronics can measure not only alternating current, but also direct current. We have an LCD display and an unusual push-button control method, which was typical of the first digital portable multimeters of Western production in the 70s and 80s. Electronics was released in a later period, then multimeters with a conventional switch were already fashionable, and top manufacturers even made multimeters with auto engine. So you can say the electronics were very outdated, but in any case, this is a cool multimeter. Next are transistors KT818 in metal case, TO3, new, not soldered. I don't even know why I need them, especially since I have so many of them. By the way, here except of 818 is also its pair 819, as well as KT827. And here is some really interesting stuff. One person was selling new Soviet radio kits, not soldered, in original packaging. I couldn't resist and bought as many as free, besides the price was small. They were bought specifically for the creation of the video. We will assemble them and study the circuit. I won't say yet what kind of devices these are, but the smartest ones probably already found them by the number on the box. Many people will be interested. On the one hand, these are already collectible items and you shouldn't solder them. On the other hand, they were created for this purpose, so that they can be soldered and studied for self-development. In this box, instead of the promised vitamins, there is something more interesting. A pair of Key R572 PV5 microcircuits released in 1992. This is an analog to digital converter, which is the main microcircuit responsible for calculating and displaying an image on the display in the multimeter electronics MMT01. It is a direct analog of the ICL7106 microcircuit. It is these microcircuits that are used in most budget multimeters, in the DT830 series that drop is the ADC7106. I need these chips to restore one of my electronics MMT01. In this nice box, we have an almost completely assembled metal detector pirate. Why do I need this, taking into account the fact that in my warehouse I can find several such metal detectors that I assembled earlier? It's simple. This thing is assembled on a factory printed circuit board, both for a smooth transition to advertising of our sponsor JLC PCB, which can make for your boards much more complicated than this. The company is ready to fulfill the most demanding orders for the manufacture of industrial printed circuit boards of any size, complexity, shape and number of layers within reason. There is a large selection of track coverage and soda mask colors. The prices of the boards are still humane at the moment. You will find a link to the JLC website in the description. 
About the metal detector pirate, which is perhaps the most popular on the internet and is repeated by many radio amateurs, we will talk later. This is quite a good device for a novice digger, but now let's move on to other goodies from this package. In this box we have ferrite products, a couple of very cool chocks and a huge power pulse transformer. This is from Yuri, who dismantled some kind of power supply. And what kind of power unit was that block you can estimate judging by the size of the power transformer. This transformer is made up of several cores and wound with the leads via. Chocks are also so cool, winding made with copper tape. I took the transformer with only one purpose, for my homemade version of a powerful free-phase induction heater for a power of 25 to 30 kW. Well, in the end, we move on to larger gizmos. The Laboratory Direct Current Source IPS1 is practically new. This is such a nice power supply, with adjustable output voltage from 0 to 15 volts and a maximum current of up to 1 amp. It has protection against short circuits. Output voltage is indicated by a pointer indicator. There are two knobs on the front panel for fine and coarse voltage adjustment. The device is made with an iron transformer, has a completely linear circuit implemented on transistors. For those who are interested, in this video I collected, checked and explained the principle of operation of the regulator circuit of this power supply. It's quite a good, reliable power source for small tasks. By the way, its body is completely metal. It doesn't take up much space on the work table and was purchased specifically for my retro laboratory. And in the end, the most expensive device in this package is the old digital desktop voltmeter V748. This is a high-precision multimeter designed to measure AC and DC voltage, resistance and current, although with current it isn't so simple. 4.5-digit voltmeter with fully automatic selection of the measurement range has gas discharge indicators. They don't look as beautiful as the giant IN18, but it is better than a soulless LCD. V748, as I already said, is quite precise. It can be used as a standard for calibrating devices that are less precise in terms of class. My sample is a bit not accurate at DC voltage measurement and needs to be calibrated. This is a matter of a few minutes, but we will deal with the calibration another time. It measures resistance with very high accuracy. By the way, it can measure resistance from 10 megohm to 20 megohm with an error of plus or minus 0.55%, DC voltage from 10 microvolts to 1000 volt with an error of plus or minus 0.07%, and AC from 10 microvolt to 30 volt with an error of 1.5%. Direct and alternating current range is from 10 nanoamps to 2 amperes. In the case of DC, the error is about 0.2%, and in the case of AC, 1.2%. The device is factory sealed and in good condition. That's all I wanted to show today. There will definitely be a separate video about many of the devices from this package in the future. Today, I finish on this. In the description you will find a lot of useful information, including links to my other resources. Now I say goodbye, until we meet again. With you as always, was Kassian TV.